Great. Well, then I would like to call the November 17th, 2021 Longmont Sustainability Advisory Board meeting to order. And could we please start with a roll call? Yes. Uh, Kate Collardson is absent. Mary Lynn is also absent. Adam Reed. I'm here. Um, Jim Metcalf. I'm here. Charles Musgrave is going to be joining us shortly. Kay Volmeyer. Present. Robert Davidson. Hello. Um, Lisa Knobloch. Here. Here. Annie Noble. Here. Uh, Francie Jaffe. Here. Um, Debbie Seidman. I'm here. Debbie, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Okay. And great. it's confusing, so I don't mind either way. All right. Um, Heather McIntyre is here, and um, Susan Bartlett is also with us. And we don't have a council member currently because they have not made that decision since the election. So be they're probably fighting it out. It's it's the most desired. <laughs> it's the most desired board position. Yes, we all know you it. know it. Yeah. I think they're discussing that at next week's meeting. So it will be um, January when we have our liaison. But board uh, chair, you have a quorum. Wonderful. We have a quorum. Um, with the land acknowledgement statement, I'll read it this time, but uh, I was gonna float the idea that perhaps we could actually do this in a round robin uh, in the future, just so everybody is saying it at some point. If somebody would also li like to read it this week, that's fine. I can just go ahead as well. Um, but I kind of thought that maybe in the future, instead of just the whoever's chairing reads it, but um, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. So uh, we acknowledge that Longmont sits on the traditional territory of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Ute, and other indigenous peoples. We honor the history. Uh, and the living and spiritual connection that the First Peoples have with this land is our commitment to face the injustices that have happened when the land was taken, to educate our communities, ourselves, and our children to ensure that these injustices do not happen again. All right, uh, so uh, next on the agenda is the approval of last minute of last meeting's minutes. Uh, is there a motion on the floor? Yes. I will make a motion yes. to approve the meet the meeting minutes. Wonderful. Would somebody like to second that motion? I'll second that. All right. All in favor of approving the meet the minutes from last month's meeting. Aye. Wonderful. Unanimous. Uh, now, uh, as um, I would like to uh, open it up to the public, invited to be heard. Each person wishing to speak would be unmuted to speak one at a time. Jordan, to speak, please state your name and address for the record. You'll have three minutes for comment. Heather, do we have any public who wish to be heard this week? We this did moment? not have anyone reach out to us, so we don't have any present with us this time around. We did, we did not. Well, we will fly on to agenda item number seven then. Um, are there any revisions or submissions of documents that the uh, staff need to bring up? Not that I'm aware of. All right, I will take that as a no. And uh, we are already on to general business after four minutes. Man, all right. Um, so, yeah, I know we have two two items. So I'd just like to remind the board members to hold your comments until the end of each presentation. Uh, so after the staff have finished presenting, just for time's sake. Uh, we are going to start with the electrification plan update with Susan Bartlett. Well, thank you, Chair and board members. Um, I like the way you run your meetings. This is great. Um, I'm Susan Bartlett. I'm a key account manager with the Energy Strategies and Solutions Group. And uh, I, I recognize many of you from the last time I was able to come and talk with you about electrification, but there may be one or two new folks. So good to see you all again. Um, Heather, let's see. Oh, no, not yet. Uh, yeah, it was March when I was here last time talking about this. So I just wanted to share with you where we are and let you know any progress that we've made so far. And you can go to the next slide, Heather. Or am I? Oh, there we go. Um, beneficial building electrification planning is just one of a number of initiatives uh, to help us move as a community away from fossil fuels toward efficient electricity. Um, that will be 100% carbon free by 2030. 
in addition to the renewable electric energy goal, the city also has goals, as you all are very aware, related to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And building electrification is one of a number of things that will help us get to those goals. Uh, next slide. And so as a reminder, or for those of you who are new to the board, building electrification is simply shifting from using fossil fuels in buildings to using electric equipment instead for building systems. And it, it's, it's simple in its basic form, but it's complicated because it involves both new, new construction and existing buildings, residential and commercial. And you know we want we want to get it right. Our planning effort entails also uh, being mindful of affordability and the economics of making the transition to cleaner fuel sources in our built environment. So we're trying to um, we're trying to balance all those different tensions. Next slide. We're about midway through our planning process, and that process includes convening an advisory committee. And that committee is made up of two city council members. We have um, Mayor Peck. We also have council member Martin. We have several city staff members. Lisa is among them. We also have two at-large community members. And then we have representatives from some key sectors like affordable housing and real estate and building and development. We also have uh, a couple of partners at the table from like Platte River Power Authority and also Boulder County. Um, so in addition to our advisory committee, we began early this year with some market research that involved talking with contractors and consumers about some building electrification opportunities, their level of awareness, their um, uh, understanding of what's involved in that. And we're also close to having some results of a cost benefit analysis that looks at those opportunities from that, um, from that framework as well. In addition, we've been working with Platte River Power Authority on a study that looks at, uh, that is looking at grid capacity impacts that's associated with different electrification adoption scenarios. And of course, they're looking at their whole service territory, but we are um, you know, hoping to draw some information that will be specific to Longmont. Um, and, and this work is just going to inform our planning strategies and also more specifically kind of how we can implement in a way that works. Next slide. Actually, Heather, I'm going to have you go back one. I jumped ahead. So aside from the, the research and the advisory committee, um, and the advisory committee is one form of stakeholder engagement, you all are another opportunity for stakeholder engagement. We're, but, but we're looking at developing a communication strategy to uh, communicate more broadly. And um, that's on the next slide. And then we hope to have our plan developed by mid-2022 so that we can begin implementation at that time. OK, now next slide. As you all know, stakeholder engagement on something uh, like building electrification, which is not an, an easy topic, is, is really important. And we want to make sure that we're using all of our avenues for sharing information and also for gathering feedback. So again, we have our advisory committee. We're also working with our consultant to reach out in other ways. Um, that includes some one-on-one -on -one interviews with peer cities that are also uh, embarking on this task, uh, talking with key sector representatives, and then we're hosting some focus groups to give us a sense for level of awareness, what the potential benefits and barriers are from those perspective, and then what are some meaningful ways that we can communicate about building electrification that are going to resonate uh, in a variety of ways in our community. And then but finally, we, we want to continue to be engaged with boards and commissions like yours um, and other local organizations that are interested in, in our progress. That could be, uh, you know, the Longmont Sus Sustainability Coalition, ECAT, um, you know, so there are a variety of options that we're taking advantage of there. Next slide. So far, we've had four advisory 
committee meetings. And during those meetings, we focused on identifying these community priorities. Um, these priorities align with other city efforts. That was something we were intentful about. They're also gonna serve as some guideposts for strategies that we're gonna put in the plan. We've also spent some time building an equity foundation within the committee so that we have that as a, as a lens, if you will, for evaluating what's gonna go into the plan and how those things are gonna be implemented over time so that everyone in our community is gonna benefit. And we had our fourth committee meeting this Monday. Um, at, at that time, we had a chance to dive into a host of building electrification best practices, which can be kind of overwhelming. There's just a lot going on right now and much of it is trial and error um, you know it, it, there are new things happening so it's a lot to sort through we also uh, in addition to getting some introductions to some of these best practices we also talked about how we're going to try and winnow the list and um, prior, prioritize the things that make the most sense for Longmont so that's sort of the the next big lift for us next slide So as I mentioned, our, our research, our current research efforts are going to wrap up at the end of this year. It doesn't mean we're not going to uh, need to look at other things, but at least those things that we have underway are going to wrap up at the end of this year. There's, there's a lot to do yet in 2022 to hit our goal of having a final plan at uh, mid-year. And that includes identifying what the best practices are that we want to have in our plan. That also includes modeling some of the potential outcomes if if we implement these practices effectively. Um, so we have a consultant that's modeling some scenarios that look at timelines and potential emissions reductions and costs. And then we're gonna continue to incorporate stakeholder feedback as we flesh out the communication strategy and develop an actionable plan with things that we think we can start working on right away as well as things that we know will, will take a longer runway and need more development. And as we get further along in this process, I'm happy to come back and share progress, but again, look for a final plan late in the summer of 2022. And next slide. Any questions? Thanks, nice Chair. I just that, wanted to mention that oh. um, Charles Musgrave did join us now. And oh, Charles, welcome, you Charles. should be able to. There you go. All right. Welcome. Uh, well, uh, I see Adam has his hand up. Sure. Thanks, James. And thanks, Susan, for the talk. I had a quick question. Is the PRPA involved in this work at all? Yes. Uh, we have a committee member that's from Platte River. And, and as I mentioned, we're working with them on kind of looking at if, you know, if we have certain levels of electrification on the grid, not only on our uh, distribution, but, you know, on the, related to generation, what does that look like? And how do we need to plan ahead for that? So, yes. Uh, yeah, Robert. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, for new construction, obviously we have a lot of say in what the rules are for that in Longmont. For existing buildings, what levers are we looking at? I realize we're still early on, but what, what carrots or sticks are we looking at using to try to motivate people to, to get on board in their existing buildings? Well, that is the conundrum, right? And I had a snarky answer, which was going to be magic or candy or something but that's not a real answer. Uh, you know, we're considering incentives. We're considering some policy ideas where, uh, you know, we would look at, you know, if you get a permit to replace a certain type of equipment, what do you replace it with? Uh, we're, we're looking at working with, you know, folks that are doing benchmarking and they have to hit certain performance requirements. How do you do that? So um, it's just, it's a harder nut to crack for sure. I have a okay. quick one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, I know that city sales tax hits every business owner that does retail of any sort. Have you considered doing offsets or deductions off that to motivate businesses or are you primarily just looking at residential right now? 
Um, we're, we're looking at both commercial and residential. Um, there are much, there are many more opportunities that have been demonstrated on the, on the residential side than the commercial side, as you might imagine. Um, but we hadn't considered the, the tax consideration that you just mentioned, and I'll make note of that. Because I would say that would be a big motivator for, for retail and commercial to, to, to incentivize, I'll tell you that. Well, thank you for the input. I think it's a good option for us to put on the table. I'd just like to add, I, I know that our our schedule on this board can get uh, pretty jammed up, but I would love when the research phase has been completed to actually invite you back to, to get a synopsis of, of what some of the major findings are. I think it would be very interesting and informative from my perspective to, actually, to kind of see how things are framed before the actual plan comes out. Um, I, I'd, I'd love to see some sort of a, a kind of like a basic take home points from from the research and some of the modeling if possible. And I, like I said, I, I know that we're very busy, but but I, I would love to, to find a, a time in the spring um, where you guys would be ready and then and then we, we would also be able to have you back. Well, I would like to do that. Um, as I said, it's really important for us to keep your board and other um, commissions and boards kind of up to speed so that we don't get to the end and have everybody say, what, wait, we didn't, that's not what we thought. Um, this is helpful for us along the way too. So um, if, you'll, if, uh, if you'll work us in, we'll gladly come back. I say we, I'll gladly come back as often as you'll let the, me. The royal we. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Are there any more questions from, from the board or city staff? Looks, looks like it. Well, thank you so much. All right. Well, we thank you for your that. time today. Yeah. All right. Uh, we will now move on to item uh, B, 2021 Sustainability Review and 2022 Priorities with Lisa Nabla. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. And this might be a pretty quick meeting. So I know normally our meetings are pretty packed, but you know, I shouldn't speak too soon. But this is this is a pretty, pretty high level um, overview and we don't have a December meeting, but I, I just wanted to take advantage of the opportunity since we actually did have some time on the agenda today. Um, actually, before I do this, is it okay if we take a minute to introduce Debbie, Heather? Yes, absolutely. I to do that really quickly. Um, so if some of you, some of you may be familiar, but um, Tim Ellis, who was our representative from uh, Longmont Power Communications or LPC on this board, uh, just left us recently. So the new LPC rep is Debbie Seidman. So I'm going to hand it off to her for a minute so she can introduce herself. All right. Hey, can you... See me? Yes. Hear me? Okay. Thank you for that introduction. And yes, I am new um, representing and working with LPC on this board. Um, I do work for Longmont Power and Communications, which is a municipal utility with the city of Longmont. And uh, my primary goal, my primary, sorry, role with the city of Longmont is benchmarking, primarily benchmarking of our larger commercial buildings. And um, right now we have a fairly large voluntary program for buildings 20,000 square feet and larger. And just to give you a little bit about my background, I'm a, uh, I have an undergraduate degree in engineering, building systems engineering from CU and an MBA from CSU. Spent many years as mechanical engineer in facilities, also some in the design realm. Um, I do have my PE license. And I've worked with other utilities and I'm excited to be here at the city and, and helping with the benchmarking efforts. So thank you. Thanks, Debbie. Welcome. Uh, thank, you for, thank you for that, Lisa, and welcome. Yeah. All right, Heather, so you can pull that back up. Thanks. Great. Okay, so, um, yep. Oh, can you go back one? Yeah, there you go. So. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Um, just wanted to start, all of these things I think are gonna be pretty familiar with you all, but it's nice at the end of the year to just take a couple minutes to look um, back. There's a lot that's happened uh, this year. And then uh, just, I'm gonna highlight some 2022 priorities to give you all a sense of what's gonna be coming your way. 
And then we don't have a December meeting. And so we'll pick back up in January uh, and have a similar conversation that we, we've had before around what are the top priorities from the board. So Jim, you're talking about making sure to bring back the electrification plan at key points. There's gonna be some other things that I'll highlight um, that we'll just wanna make sure really stay uh, at the top of the priority list for this board to make sure that, that you all are adequately in the loop and providing your expertise and, and insight into different things that are happening. So um, you can move to the next slide, Heather. So in the broader climate action space, uh, as we've been keeping you all pretty abreast of the climate risk and vulnerability mapping project, that's wrapping up pretty soon. We had a demonstration with our consultants uh, just this week, and it's really exciting. And I'll be very excited to share with you all the final, the final version of that, although it's really phase one. So we are looking at, as we talked to you about, using sustainability tax money in 2022 to dig into some additional data and really start the planning aspect of what do we do with this information in terms of um, building uh, resilience for community members. Uh, the building electrification plan, as Susan was just talking about, the AMI rollout is underway uh, and is set to be completed by, I believe at this point, uh, early to mid 2023. Uh, the zero waste resolution um, is how we did have to kind of put that a bit on hold because we lost a couple of key staff members in our communications department and our uh, equity and engagement specialist who was really helping get our community engagement plan going. Uh, but Francie from the sustainability team has been helping me uh, with that and engaging the equitable climate action team. And, and I think we're still on track to have that completed by mid 2022. Um, but we're going to be playing a little bit of catch up with that stack capacity piece. And then the equitable climate action team is uh, very much interested in doing a zero waste education project. And if Francie's on, if you want to jump on for a second and just give people the rundown of what that project is about. Yeah. And before that, I, I figured since this is kind of, I'll give a, a quick overview of all the kind of everything the Equitable Climate Action Team or ECAT worked on this year. Um, the first half of the year, uh, they had, if I think we invited the board, had a big uh, educational event as part of the Sustainable Resilient Longmont Earth Day, where they talked about equitable climate action and they gave feedback on different city projects like the Climate Risk and Vulnerability Map um, that's actually going back to the group. They gave feedback right at the very beginning and then they're going to give some input to the final product um, in December. Again, really focusing on making, kind of bringing that climate equity lens to this vulnerability mapping. Um, they, so they've given some feedback on some different projects. Um, over the summer, they added new members. So there's now 10 uh, members on the ECAT. It's about five members who've been there from the beginning of 2020 five uh, new additional members. Um, so they kind of reset and kind of try to focus on areas they wanted to work on. Um, one of them was zero waste. As um, Lisa mentioned, they also have expressed interest in air quality. Um, so we spend some meetings learning more about kind of what's happening regionally or locally with those efforts. And um, Recently, they identified, uh, besides continuing to give feedback on city projects, they really want to do a more actionable project in the community. Um, so one of the members proposed working in uh, finding a local park and neighborhood uh, to uh, really kind of engage that community and increase zero waste education, what is recyclable, uh, what is compostable, also really trying to focus on a park that um, they might actually work with our park staff and our waste services manager to add more recycling to that park. So um, it, it's, it'll be a good opportunity to, to work on engaging community members who maybe haven't uh, an increasing knowledge of what is recyclable. Um, so we actually tonight, um, I, if I'll have to leave the meeting around around 4.45 today um, because we have a big brainstorming meeting tonight with the group on where they want to go on that project. So I should hopefully have more updates for you all on uh, where they're focusing on and what that looks like in January. Great, thanks, Francie. 
All right, Heather, you can move to the next slide, please. Well, in the electrical electric vehicle space of the Go EV resolution that was adopted by Council at the end of September, uh, which is really exciting, and that you all gave some feedback on. I did include your feedback around um, the hydrogen fuel cells and the. Oh goodness, I'm sorry that I'm blanking on. There was another key piece of feedback that you gave me, and I'm so sorry that that's not coming to my mind right now. But I did include that in the council the communication that went to council with that resolution. Um, the DOE grant, I am very sad to report, we did not um, receive that grant. Um, we had really high hopes of that. Uh, we got really good feedback from the DOE on that grant. And um, Tim Ellis, who, who helped pull that grant together and who's worked for the DOE and has done things on the grant side of things, um, <laughs> said that really, really felt like they, that our application was really competitive and that based on their feedback, um, our, we had lots of strengths and very few weaknesses. So I think that just indicates it was a really competitive pool and they really did have to reach to find reasons to not fund our, our application, which is both disappointing, but I think also speaks highly of, of the proposal that was put together. And um, even though we didn't get that funding, it really put together a strong foundation and a strong team to go after additional funding opportunities that are now gonna be coming through, particularly through uh, both the infrastructure bill and the state transportation funding and potentially some other funding sources. And our partners at the Clean Cities Coalition uh, are helping us to identify some, hopefully some additional funding opportunities. We're probably gonna have to chunk pieces of that out because that was a pretty comprehensive uh, proposal, uh, but I think it's okay. I think it, it gave us some um, opportunities to do that. So we'll definitely keep you all posted as that evolves. Uh, we are participating in the regional electric vehicle planning cohort that's being led by Excel's Partners in Energy Program and some other communities with Boulder County. Uh, and that effort I think will also really line us up as a, as a region um, to do some collaborative uh, fund securing, hopefully around regional things uh, like EV infrastructure installation and things like that. And then continuing to work on our fleet electrification. Uh, next slide, please. And then looking at 2022 priorities. Next slide. Uh, a lot of stuff around education and engagement. Um, so. Bernice is uh, launching the to go compost compostable to go where program with small businesses in partnership with Boulder County's PACE program. Uh, so expansion of the SOL program. So especially with our additional staffing capacity that we're going to have in 2022. So we'll be continuing uh, to recruit additional uh, volunteer technicians as well as households for that program. We're going to be continuing the, the climate lecture series which we launched this past year in partnership with the museum. We did it this past year as part of Earth Week and looking next year, we're gonna spread that out over, over the year. So have probably one lecture per quarter. Uh, the sustainability liaison program, which is one of the strategies identified in the climate action um, recommendations report. So we'll be getting the foundation for that program in place. And then working with, we are gonna be rehiring the equity and engagement specialist. And one of their key tasks is gonna be helping to establish an equity-based community engagement template that we can use not only for sustainability and climate action work, but for city projects and programs across the organization. Next slide, please. In the energy space, the commercial building benchmarking program, which was also identified in the climate action recommendations report, um, and as Debbie mentioned, that's the program that she leads. So probably in a couple months, uh, we'll have her um, give you all a rundown of that program and especially some things that are happening as far as state legislation in this area and how that impacts uh, Longmont and businesses in Longmont or buildings in Longmont. Expanding the CARE program, which is the Low Income Energy Efficiency Program, expanding commercial and residential energy efficiency, and then uh, continuing with work on the distributed energy resources in partnership with that river. Next slide, please. 
And then lastly, as I mentioned, uh, the next phase of the climate risk and vulnerability mapping, uh, establishing the Climate Action Fund, which is a recommendation in the Climate Action Report. And that's a fund that'll be specifically to support low-income households and small businesses in uh, any of our climate action work. So really establishing fund and revenue sources that can support um, transitions and policies and programs around you know, things like electrification or energy efficiency, uh, building code updates. So looking at solar and EV readiness and electrification. And then last, as I mentioned to you all, not too long ago with um, Aaron Fosdick from planning, kicking off the sustainability plan and envision Longmont updates. Next slide. And that's it. So pretty high level, it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, Francie, if you wanna jump in for a minute since we have plenty of time, do you wanna just give folks a quick snapshot of uh, water conservation priorities for next year? Sure. Um, so, uh, uh, for water conservation right now, we're, we're wrapping up the year, um, looking into some new projects for next year. We're starting to get uh, data from our automated meter readers um, into our um, data management system. So with that, um, we're looking into, can we do a demonstration project that looks at more proactive continuous usage, specifically trying to identify continuous usage that might be a water leak. Um, so currently our system, when it's billed monthly, uh, it, we, we can't, it's usually a, a high bill alert if someone has a leak. Um, with being able to identify continuous usage within one day, two days, three days, um, we could be much more proactive and really engage the customer earlier um, in identifying these leaks at a much faster time frame. Um, so we're looking into how we can do that given our data ma management system for next year. Uh, um, our customer, our future customer portal, um, which there's not a current timeline on, would ideally be able, would have some more integrated features that we can engage with the customer. That is, hasn't, we don't, there's not a set timeline for when that will be updated. So we're trying to figure out, are there other ways we can start and maybe like a specific neighborhood kind of trial, how to notify the customer, um, what information to provide so that when we do launch that customer portal, we can be really effective in how, to, how we notify people about leaks. Um, so that's a project upcoming for next year. Um, we are continuing with our normal efficiency works, um, commercial rebates and residential rebates. We did uh, this fall start to see an uptick in commercial participation. Um, that we've seen kind of steady participation on the residential side. Um, so uh, hopefully we can see a continued increase in commercial participation. Um, and then Resource Central, we're continuing our normal programs as well as continuing the Income Qualified Garden a Box program that we started this year. Uh, ne another, we're continuing doing a lot of work across the organization, but especially with our planning department and our effort um, to try to integrate land use and water use planning. Um, so last year we supported kind of a, um, a document about how to transition your landscapes. This year we are helping to support the sugar mill project to make sure that they're factoring in um, low impact development, water conservation practices into that project. And next year we're talking with supporting planning and development being a more detailed plant list so that when developers or redevelopers are going and presenting their designs, instead of just having a very, very open-ended, please install Xeriscape, they'll actually have a list to reference. And that'll be easier for us to review as well as the um, those developing plans for us to review. Um, so we hope this can be a step in towards um, having kind of new development or redevelopment having more water wise practices. So we're, we're looking for more opportunities with planning and across the organization to do that. And then next year we will start our water efficiency master plan update. So the update is required by state law to be complete in 2024. We're starting early because if, um, for the board members who were here last year when we were doing the climate action recommendations report, there was a water conservation recommendation 
which the board as well as staff um, recommended that instead of pursuing the, the kind of increased water conservation goal in that recommendation, and instead staff reevaluate the uh, what current water conservation goal and determine whether we should increase it and to what amount. So that's what we're hoping. That's why I wanted to start the process early, uh, look at most recent climate data, see if we want to continue with our current water conservation goal or propose different um, goals to city council. And then once city council has made that decision, we'll then start to actually develop more in depth the strategies that would go into our water efficiency master plan. So we want to start that process early and um, so that we can um, do that by 2024. That's my update for upcoming priorities for next year. Thanks, Fancy. Um, and my internet, I think, just kicked me off Zoom for a second. So I'm back on, but if for some reason I disappear or you both can't hear me, that's, that's what's happening. But uh, any questions or comments on, on any of that? Just one question. Is the, is the DOE grant something that can be resubmitted? That's a good... Or was it a that's a good yeah. question. From what I recall, it's not um, a program that has like an annual cycle. Mm -hmm. And I think from what I understand, and um, Charles, you might have a better understanding of this, is that sometimes they just have pots of money and they'll go through a grant cycle to spend down that money. And it's like, it may come back at some point and it may not, I don't think there's any guarantee. We'll definitely keep an eye out for that for sure. Um, but my understanding, is no, but I'm, I wasn't as directly involved in that grant writing process. Charles, do you know, or do you have any insight on that? I, I think that's right. I think this was a specific um, FOA, specific call for proposals that we were responding to that's not an ongoing program that you can apply to every year sure. during their, their open window. Right. So. Are there other questions for Lisa or Francie? Oh, we have that. Uh, yeah, but given this is is a oh. huge focus. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks, Jim, and thanks, Lisa, for the presentation. I was just going to ask a follow up question to Jim's for the DOE grant. How much of that could be used for other grants, like for example, the materials that went into that, and what sort of opportunities are out there? Yeah. So that's what we're hoping that we can actually re mm -hmm. essentially recycle that application or um, we don't know all the details as yet in terms of the infrastructure bill. And we know that there's a ton of money in there for EV infrastructure. We don't know yet how much is gonna come down through the states, how that money is gonna be dispersed. We don't know those details as yet, but there is also um, state funding from the transportation package that was passed last year that also has a focus on that. So Phil Greenwald, who's our planning uh, manager, who um, has been to this group a couple of times, he's keeping an eye on that. So we have, uh, as well as Afra, who helped write the grant, is, is looking out for those additional opportunities. And as I mentioned, our partner at the Queen Cities Coalition has some ideas. Uh, like I said, we probably, I don't think there's going to be another opportunity necessarily where we can resubmit it in its entirety. It was an almost close to $12 million grant, although about 60% of that was a match that we were putting in, but it's still a significant, a significant ask. Um, so we'll probably take pieces of that as we can, as given whatever focus areas are coming down from these other sources. So I don't have a more specific answer at this point, but I, I do feel pretty hopeful because there's a huge focus on this right now. Yeah, Charles. Charles? Charles. Yeah, so so the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that just passed does have $7.5 billion in it for EV charging stations, but uh, taking that from a, a, a bill that's been signed into, um, you know, how they're actually going to implement that, that's, so there is, there's de as Lisa said, there's definitely money. <laughs> it's just a matter of like, how are they going to um, uh, basically distribute that? Are there other questions for Francie or Lisa? All right. Uh, well, thank you.
Thank you both then for the presentations. Um, we are now on to uh, other business. Is there any other business that is not, not listed here? I don't have any on the agenda. I'm gonna assume that means no. Uh, are there any items from staff? I don't have any unless anyone else on has anything they want to throw in there. Fr Francie or Annie, either of you, I'm guessing no. I don't have anything. All right. Um, items from the board. That's us. All right. We have no our, real creativity today here. I'm just saying it's like we already just ate an enormous Thanksgiving dinner and are all like tired now. It's like the, the tryptophan is already is preemptive. Uh, we don't have any items from the council because we are a council person less in our in our uh, right now. Um, informational items and board correspondence. Heather, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, those are just usually the attachments at the end of the ah. packet, but we didn't have any this month. We did not. It was just it was just the minutes. But Jim, I think you were going to do something today, weren't you? Oh, <laughs> that is true. When when Heather told me that uh, I was going to be chair, I asked if I could I could demand that we have jousting competitions and other uh, other other feats of strength. Um, but it's a little bit hard to do that remotely, so I think we're going to have to postpone until we're back in person for the feats of strength and daring. <laughs> we'll look All right, forward well, to that. <laughs> yeah, I need everybody to start stretching. Um, all right. Well, then, if there is nothing else, if nobody has any other things they want to bring up, I think that uh, I'm looking for somebody to move to adjourn. I'll motion to adjourn. For a second. I'll second. All in favor of adjourning. Aye. All right. Well, thank Aye. you, everybody, and ha have a wonderful uh, holiday season. Thank you. We'll see you in January. Happy holidays. 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 Thanks. Awesome.